I mean summer law. And in this video, I want to introduce the topic of real-time software engineering. You sometimes think about software systems as being enterprise systems or apps, but in fact, the vast majority of software systems that exist in the world are control systems. They're real-time systems that are controlling all sorts of devices from watches to aircraft. In many cases in control systems, the software is what's called an embedded system. That is, it's embedded into the hardware, sometimes in, in read-only memory, and it's used to control that hardware. The software has to detect and react to events from outside the system, things happening in the world, to analyse the, these events and then to issue control signals to the hardware to respond to these events. So if it detects, for example, that a car is accelerating out of control, it may automatically apply the brakes. The critical difference between real-time systems or embedded systems and other classes of software system is timing or responsiveness. Real-time systems have to respond to events within a certain time and the correctness of these systems depends both on their response and the timing of that response. When we think of other systems, we talk about correctness in terms of what they do, but by and large, we simply ignore how long it takes them to do that. We can't do that with real-time systems. If a real-time system misses a deadline, then the system is not behaving correctly. So that gives us a definition of a real-time system. A real-time system is a software system where the correct functioning of the system depends on the results produced by the system and the time at which these results are produced. And within that definition, we can talk about both soft real-time systems and hard real-time systems. A soft real-time system is one where, if the results are not produced on time, the operation of the overall system is degraded. A hard real-time system is one where, if the results are not produced on time, the system fails. Most embedded systems share a set of characteristics. First of all, they run all the time. They get set up when we turn on the system, and they only stop when we turn the system off. That is, they do not terminate during execution, or at least they should not terminate during execution. It's often the case that interactions with the system's environment are unpredictable, and there may be physical limitations, such as the battery size, the, the size of the enclosure for the system, which limit the system. In many cases, there has to be direct access to the system hardware, and it's often the case that safety and reliability issues are extremely important for real-time systems. We sometimes think of real-time systems as reactive systems, that is, systems that react to stimuli coming from the system's environment. And these stimuli may be periodic or aperiodic. Periodic stimuli are stimuli that occur at known and regular intervals. So we may set up a system to measure temperature three or four times per second and we get a stimulus from the temperature sensor at that rate. Aperiodic stimuli are stimuli that happen at unpredictable intervals. So for example, if we have a sensor measuring the power in a system and there's a power failure, we'll get a, a stimulus from that sensor, but we won't know when that's going to happen. So this is a general model of a real-time system where we have a set of sensors of different types around the system, measuring and looking at the state of the system's environment, the system doing the processing, and a set of actuators, things, devices, which can change the state of that environment. So for example, if there's a thermocouple measuring the temperature, there may be a heating element so that if the temperature falls too low, that heating element is actuated. So the heating element is the actuator. One of the differences, one of the very important differences between real-time systems and other types of system is that real-time systems are virtually always set up as a set of parallel processes. They're set up that way to allow them to respond 
in an effective way to the events that are happening in their environment. If we had simply a sequential process, it's to, very difficult to design that process so that we can predict the responsiveness of the system. So typically we have a set of sensor control processes and these interact with the sensors in the system to gather the data from them. Often they do some analysis and uh, summarization. There's a real-time control process which takes that data and analyzes it, sometimes called a data processor. Then there's an actuator control process or a set of actuator control processes which interact with the actuators in the system, sending them control signals to turn them on and off, open a valve or whatever the actuator is designed to do. So that's a general introduction to real-time systems and what they do. In my next video, I'm going to talk about patterns of real-time system architectures so that the system can respond in a timely way to stimuli from its environment.